brought to you by Mountain Dew. Rick Sutha, Nambana. Okay, so welcome to the show, Mr. Colleen. Thank you. So how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. It's, it's nice weather outside and uh -huh. it's, uh, we were training for full, so it's, it's good. So you're liking the country, Nepal? Yeah, I do. It's, uh, I knew that when I came here because uh -huh. we, we stayed here before, but it's a, it's a nice country, nice uh -huh. climate and, and friendly people uh, and interesting football, so uh -huh. I, I really like it. Uh, so did you visit uh, your, the country in your free time these days? Uh, so far it, it hasn't been any free time, <laughs> pretty much, uh, but uh, I've been with, with work to, to Pokhara and uh, over to Japa. Uh -huh. uh, before I went down to south uh, a trip, mm -hmm. but otherwise mainly uh, mainly Kathmandu. Uh, so now you are the head coach for Nepali national team. How does it feel to be the head coach? But it, it's a fun job, mm -hmm. uh, interesting job. Uh, it's a it's a pretty tough job. Uh, it's it's a lot of pressure, of course. Mm -hmm. But but it's uh, uh, really interesting to work with these players. They they want to learn. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are willing to work hard for it. So it's a, for me, it's a great challenge uh, as as a coach and and as a, as a leader to to try to work here and try to be a part of improving Nepali football. Uh, so why Nepal? Why did you choose Nepal? Now mainly because because I got the offer uh, uh -huh. from Nepal and uh, that uh, offer was so appealing that uh, you came here. And mainly, I, I enjoyed my time here mm -hmm. with Machina before. Uh, I enjoyed staying here and, and saw the potential mm -hmm. in Nepali football. Uh, so we had pretty much decided to stay in Sweden, mm -hmm. and I took a job outside of football uh, when when uh, Anfa called, mm -hmm. and uh, we we discussed a little bit at home because mm -hmm. we had just started new jobs, both me and my wife, and we just. Uh, fix a new house uh, yeah. that we were supposed to move into and so the, the timing was uh, horrible uh, in that sense but the, the sporting challenge is, uh, is really tempting and uh, just to see what, what we can do together here. So that's it, the decision was pretty easy in the end. Uh, so your family, all of uh, there in Sweden is happy with this job? Yeah, I think my mother and, and uh -huh. my mother-in-law would like us to stay in Sweden because it's far away from home. But uh, my friends uh, and, and my colleagues mm -hmm. from, from football think it's uh, really interesting. Uh, so they follow us pretty closely. Uh, so previously you have worked in Nepal, like you worked in Machindra Football Club. So from then to now, so what, did the, what changes did you see in Nepali football? Uh, I, I think not so many changes mm -hmm. maybe. It's been... Since I left, it's been some very tough years mm -hmm. for Nepali football. Uh, the league was closed for, I think, four seasons, and, and that's, of course, uh, very tough. Mm -hmm. Now it, it started last year, and uh, it, it will start again this year. And I think that's the most important thing, to get the league started, because without the league, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get the structure in training. Mm -hmm. The coaches don't get the chance to really work with the players, and the, the players don't have a platform to, to grow from. Um, but, but I think overall that the players, it's my impression is pretty much the same as the Machinra players. Mm -hmm. They're really good to work with, um, really committed on the pitch and really wants to learn. Uh, then, then it's a bit different compared to working with players in Sweden because the background are different. Their education on the pitch is a little bit different. So uh, you have to think a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And for me working in, in English and not in Swedish mm -hmm. is also a challenge yeah. because I need to find the words and uh -huh. and the players need to understand me. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, uh, some differences, but a lot of things are, are pretty much the same. I think. Uh, so you gl your English is pretty good. I think it's so so uh, <laughs> to be honest, but but uh, I think it works talking like this. Uh -huh. The the hard thing is like when you you trying to find this this football words mm -hmm. that you use in Sweden in Swedish mm -hmm. and. Uh, you, when you don't work in English, you, you don't learn those terms. And so sometimes we need to find new words and, and like the N Nepali players don't know them in yeah. English either. So we, but with some body language and some moving around on the pitch, we, we find a solution. Uh, so how difficult or how easy is to communicate, to coordinate with the team? Uh, I, th I think it works pretty well. Uh, it is the same as in, in Machindra. I, I rely on uh, uh, one of my assistant coaches or, or one in the coaching mm -hmm. crew or, or some of the players to translate mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, most of the time it works well. I, I work in English and I, I 
do the coaching in English, but okay. sometimes you need to check if, if, if everyone has understood mm -hmm. and, and to translate. But it, it works pretty well, I think. So how is the connection with the team right now? I think it's good. Uh, the, the atmosphere in the group is very good. Uh, it's, uh, it's always a competitive situation because uh, everybody knows it's in the end it's 23 shirts uh, to fight uh, about. So it's competition among, among the players, but that attitude is very good. Uh, the atmosphere is very good. It's a lot of laughter in the sessions and I, I think that's really important. If you don't have fun yeah. training, you, you won't develop. So it's, I'm, I'm very happy with the, with the atmosphere right now. So you're having a daily uh, training, daily business training, or uh, what? This yeah, now, now we go uh, six times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we Earlier we did double sessions. Now we can't because of lack of pitches uh, here in Kathmandu. And uh, then we try to do longer sessions instead. Mm -hmm. So we, we do really long sessions. We, we do between two and three, uh, three hour sessions uh, so that they are super long. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, we need to stop and discuss a lot also about uh, tactical mm -hmm. parts and, and uh, to, to understand each other with the language. So it's, uh, we, we need those, those hours, but we, we, we go six times a week right okay, now. So, uh, you know, like uh, Nepali football is not that good in international arena. So what will be your goal to rise Nepali football? I think we, we, we need to look long term. Uh, and that was one of the main parts when, when I discussed mm -hmm. uh, with Anfa before I sign, mm -hmm. if, if we want to look like very short term and, and get a quick result or if we want to build for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, we totally agree that we need to, to build something for the future and don't really chase the, the short results. But, but at the same time, you want to win every game. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way it is. It's uh, the nature of the game. Uh, so it's, uh, we're, we're going to try to win every game. Mm -hmm. But w at the most important thing is, is still the performance to see that we, we develop, that the players are developing uh, each player and also that we develop as a group. Yeah. Uh, so I think w we should always look performance yeah. because if we can perform well, it will take us to good results mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, so, so we try to speak as, as little as possible mm -hmm. about uh, results. Yeah. Now, now we look performance and, and build from there. Uh, so, like, you know, how is the overall scenario right now of Nepali football? Like, you have been here since few months, like you played few f friendlies also. So, after that friendly now, now I have to play the FIFA World Cup qualifiers. So, uh, talking about those friendlies, so how was that friendly, how did that friendly went on? I think the first two friendlies yeah. against Kuwait away, uh, we, we had very little time together uh, as a team, I think. Considering that, it was uh, two very good performances. Uh, we would draw nil-nil mm -hmm. first one and lost one-nil second one. Uh, but Kuwait is a strong team. Mm -hmm. uh, the ranking is not so high, but mm -hmm. they missed two years without playing games. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're low. And last year, they, they beat United Arab Emirates 2-0, uh -huh. I think. They draw against Egypt, and it's, it's very mm -hmm. strong teams. And you don't get that result if you're not good. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think to, to get away with one draw and one narrow loss uh, was, was very good, considering the small amount of time we had. Uh, we couldn't attack much, uh, but we knew that beforehand. We only uh -huh. focused on, on the shape of the team and tried to, to be able to work together. Uh, so those two games, uh, I think, was very, very good. Um, the Malaysia uh, away, beginning of June, mm -hmm. uh, that was a tough game for us. We started the game mm -hmm. very, very poorly. Uh, then we, we were able to freeze the game, but we couldn't really play the way we wanted to. Uh, so that we're not very happy with that game. We lost 2-0. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then Taipei yeah. uh, away, 1-1 uh, draw. Uh, I think that's a good game. Mm -hmm we were able to push a little bit higher in the pitch. We were able to score a goal. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy that during four games, we only conceded one goal mm -hmm. in open play. And that's very strong because we, we met three good opponents. Uh, and, and the plan has all the time been to, to build from, from the back, to, to start with the defense and uh, be able to win the ball mm -hmm. on the right places on the pitch and, and then add an attacking game. Um, so, so I think we're moving in the right direction. It's uh, 
uh, it takes time uh, and the World mm -hmm. Cup qualifiers are coming yeah. soon and it's they, coming soon. they will be super tough, <laughs> Th that's the way it is. The group is tough, right? So, uh, tough. like uh, the group was out, so how was your reaction uh, looking at that uh, group? I, I think it's uh, quite funny that we got both Kuwait and Taipei in uh -huh. our group and, and uh, that can be both good and bad. W we know what to expect from them, uh, but we won't be able to surprise mm -hmm. them. But at the same time, w we know that if we play at the top of our game, w we can disturb them and we can take points against them. Uh, Jordan, uh, I haven't seen Jordan uh, uh -huh. play, to be honest. Uh, uh, the scouting will start soon and, and, and learning the other teams. Uh, so I think Jordan or any other team from group, uh, the second pool would be the same, same okay. for me. Uh, Australia, yeah, th they're good. <laughs> uh, they have Premier League players, yeah. they have players from Bundesliga and, and Celtic and big European mm. clubs. Um, I think from the first pool, if we would draw Iran, who was rank one, uh -huh. Australia or I think China was ranked number eight, mm. uh, it would be pretty much same, same. Mm. Uh, the quality is, is super high on mm. all these teams. Uh, but it's going to be fun uh, to play. What is the expectations? Uh, I think we have to expect, look at performance again. Uh, I mean, we're, we're big underdogs, of course, yeah. uh, but we've proven that we can get a result towards uh, Kuwait and Taipei. Um, Jordan, uh, I can't say so much mm -hmm. about so far, but I guess they're strong. Uh, Australia is, of course, yeah, super strong. We, we need strong. to go in there and, and look at it as an experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, before every game, we prepare to win. Uh, that's the way <laughs> you need to do. But we know it's going to be tough. And, and the important thing there is, is to, to do a good performance, yeah. uh, to be proud when we step out the mm -hmm. pitch. We have done everything w we could. Uh, mm -hmm. And if this seems proves to be stronger than us, then so be it. Uh, but we're going to do our best. Uh, so like uh, your game, f our game starting against Kuwait, 5th September is against Kuwait. So what will be your strategy for this? For the game? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm going to sit here and, uh, and <laughs> say that. Uh, but The main thing is like we don't have stadium, right? Yeah. So will it matter or not? Uh, in all these qualifiers, mm -hmm. uh, the home advantage is, yeah. is always very important. It's the same as in, uh, if you look, Champions League and, and but maybe especially in these qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I really hope that uh, it's possible to find a solution mm -hmm. because for us, sporting-wise, it, it makes a big difference to play with the home crowd in that, that cheers you on, it gives extra energy. And I think for the long-term future for Nepali football, it, it's important for the supporters and for the young supporters to be able to see mm -hmm. their players play. And mm -hmm. now when we get the chance to play yeah. Australia, a really that will massive be, players, yeah, that will be uh, massive it team. would be uh, fantastic to show that to, to those, the Nepali supporters. So I, I hope it's possible to find a solution, but right now I, I don't know. Uh -huh. There is like so much thing going on, but nevertheless, what will be your uh, strategy in gameplay? Uh, I, I think we, we have quite Taipei, we, uh -huh. we have a, a pretty clear plan in our head uh, as coaches uh, how to approach the games. Uh, I won't re reveal it here, but, okay. uh, but we, we met them, uh, we've we seen their games before we played them, we've we seen the game we played against them maybe 10 times. And uh, so, so we have an, an idea of their strong side and their weaker side. And, and a little bit how we can challenge it and uh, so, so that feels pretty good for me that the, the basic plan is probably there then a lot can happen in this six weeks or, or whatever it is uh, but I think for those two two games we, we have a start of a plan at least a start we can continue what we started uh, to build uh, for me it's very important that we we get stronger mm -hmm. tactically uh, we, we need to get more organized mm -hmm. so we have a a system to rely on when it gets tough mm -hmm. that we can go back to mm -hmm. our, our basic system uh, and find support there. Uh, so we have worked a lot with, with positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have worked a lot with getting the players to coach each other and help each other on the pitch. Uh, so that we, I want us to feel secure on the pitch mm -hmm. even if we play a very strong team. Uh, every player should know what's expected from them. And, and it takes time uh, to learn that. but. We're taking steps all the time. Uh, so we're going to continue working on that. And the past weeks, we worked pretty hard with the passing game. Uh, and hopefully, we can 
uh, play. I, I don't mind long long mm -hmm. balls, uh, but then it needs to have okay. a uh, we need to have a plan with them. So I I want us in the future to be able to, to build a, uh, the play from from the back four mm -hmm. uh, through midfield and up to strikers, but. We can't do everything at mm -hmm. once, so, so we take it step by step, yeah. and uh, we see in September where, where <laughs> we are. <laughs> so September is that time. So how do you describe as a coach, wha what kind of playing style is there in you? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, my, my, I usually say my basic formation, and I, I think it's, it's a bit silly to speak about these numbers, but uh -huh. uh, people always want number, and then I say 442. Okay. But at the same time, it's the only time you have that shape is at kickoff, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you attack with one formation and, and you defend with another formation. Uh, but I, I rely on, I want to play a zonal play. Um, I want to, to cover spaces in a good way. And I want to be able to, to attack uh, with speed. Uh, I, I, uh, I want every pass mm -hmm. to have a purpose. Uh, we shouldn't pass to each other just to get more passes. It's we should win ground with the pass, and uh, we should hurt our opponent with every pass. Um, but I guess I'm a pretty typical Scandinavian in mm -hmm. my philosophy when it comes to football. It's the 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 team, the group is very important. Yeah. Uh, we we need to be able to rely on each other. Uh, we need to be able to take the tough job for our friend. Uh, and take this tough run to open a space mm -hmm. for a friend. Um, so, yeah, should I do this old-fashioned one? I would say 4-4-2, mm -hmm. so no play, but okay. uh, it's... Uh, so you normally go for 4-4-2? Four, four, uh, as a basic formation, I, I usually do that uh, uh -huh. because I, I think it's a good learning formation because it's, it's cover spaces very well. It's easy to, to understand for players. But then if you look at, at the game, uh, I think in, in Machindra, we also said 4-4-2. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we played a 4-2-3-1 in, in reality. Uh, when we attacked, when we defended, we played a 4-4-1-1. So it's, uh, this, uh, this number is all, it's, it's like a play with numbers. Uh, it's they're just numbers. They're just numbers <laughs> and it's the, it doesn't matter if, if you say 4-4-2 four, four, yeah. and I push one winger up a little bit and suddenly you have a 4-3-3-3. Three, three, three. So it's, uh, it's all about the every like mission mm -hmm. every player gets so you can say four for two but in reality it's it's something else mm -hmm. all right uh, so you've been following nepali football uh, since very long time you were here then also in the gap you gap period you were following nepali football or no yeah, While yeah you were in your home i've been following nepali football pr pretty closely since mm -hmm. 2011 okay. i think mm -hmm. uh, i went to, to delhi and watched the SAF games mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, after being here, I, have, I still have some very good friends mm -hmm. uh, here in Nepal that we've been discussing okay. Nepali football. And, of course, uh, well, the Machindra players, mm -hmm. I was following uh, them. And so, so I've probably seen uh, most of the games mm -hmm. uh, with the national team since I left. And so I think I, I follow it pretty close pretty at much. least. <laughs> okay, so what do you think is the good point of Nepali football? I think the passion is the uh -huh. big thing. It's like the supporters are fantastic. Um, the the players are willing to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, a lot of uh, the players are are pretty okay uh, technically and then attitude wise on the pitch. Uh, so it's uh, but mainly the passion. Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. it's to me. It's, this is a football nation, and uh, we, we just need to get back on track mm -hmm. after some tough years. So Nepal is very passionate about football. <laughs> so you must uh, know about mm -hmm. Nepali football fans. They are so passionate and crazy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> yes, I, I noticed that. And, yeah. and I, I noticed as with previous coaches also when yeah. uh, the result wasn't coming really uh -huh. the right way. But that's a part of, yeah. of the job. And, and for me, it's, it's the same uh, if you're the coach for Sweden, for example. It's, uh, it's tough when the results are, are going the wrong way. But at the same time, it's, it's like you're always your own biggest criticism. And, and it's uh, if we lose, uh, if, if supporters yeah. are <laughs> unhappy. Uh, if we win, they are super happy. Yeah, yeah and I mean, if, if we lose. <laughs> that's a natural most, thing, I guess. Uh, and that's the way it is. Yeah. It's part of the job. And without feelings and emotions, mm -hmm. uh, football is nothing. Uh, so I, I think that's something we need to, to accept. And, and the younger players mm -hmm. need to learn, like, uh, if they get 
criticized in the media or mm -hmm. by supporters. Um, that's the way it is, and uh, you can't let that affect you. You need to get back there and yeah. and realize, uh, analyze your game and say this wasn't good, and what can we learn from it? So it's that's part of the game. Uh, so how did you get into football? Like, how was your childhood days like? Uh, did you play football since your childhood days and your school days? So how did you get into the sport? Uh, no, I, I always play football. I think I started when I was five or six uh, back home. Uh, th then I played uh, at, at, if you say, highest amateur level in Sweden, uh, and, and went to school to become a teacher at mm. the same time. Uh, so I, I played myself until I was. 30, 31, something mm -hmm. like that, uh, and then I went into coaching for real. Uh, the, the last two, three seasons, I was an assistant coach while, play, while okay. playing, but uh, playing-wise, I never reached those high levels. Mm -hmm. I, I was in Holland on a trial period when mm -hmm. I was 20 years old at uh, uh, Svolde in, mm -hmm. in Holland, but didn't get it. Uh, so then I went back home and, and went to university. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, uh, when I started coaching, I, I got the chance to, to work for the FA in the northern part of Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I worked mainly with educational coaches uh, and did that for seven, eight years, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, that was really developing for me. It, it, uh, you had to choose a little bit. You, you can't work there and coach professional at the same time. But I got to, to work with some of the really really good coaches in Sweden uh, some of the national team coaches and that was very developing for me uh, to, to form my uh, my leadership mm -hmm. my, my football philosophy and training philosophy uh, so that years within the FA was really really good mm -hmm. uh, so like how much international football you know like Premier League other leagues how much do you follow that leagues uh, well I, I look quite a lot uh, uh -huh. on football when I can uh, I I really liked watching the championship in England, uh -huh. uh, the more classic English okay. game. Because uh, the teams are there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 I like it. Uh, I like Italian football uh -huh. because it, it's very uh, clever football. Uh -huh. it's, it's very tactical. Uh, and, and it's, uh, it's really, as a coach, it's really mm. interesting to watch. Uh, Premier League, of course, yeah. uh, it's, it's a lot of, of speed and, and passion there too. So it's, now we, we look quite a lot of football at home. So, which is your favorite team? My team is Luton Town Football Club. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just promoted to the championship. Uh -huh. So, this season's going to be interesting. Uh -huh. We're on the way up again. Uh, so, sometime back, I talked with you. You said, like, Norwood City, you favor something um, for it. I think we are now promoted to Premier League. Yeah, uh, but I think uh, Norwich had some, some Swedish players before. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I try to follow the, the uh -huh. Swedish players. It's like in championship, we have Swedes in. Brentford and in Nottingham and mm. in Birmingham and, and in Bristol City, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so those teams, uh, apart from Luton, mm -hmm. I try to follow a little bit extra. We always had a lot of Swedes in, in Norwich. Uh, right now we don't have anyone, but but you have followed them a little bit extra yeah. because because of the Swedes. But they are uh, playing in Premier League this time, so that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but they're not Luton, so Luton <laughs> is uh, that's Hope. my team. Yeah. You next year, also maybe. next year, yeah, yeah, we'll hope so. promotes to Premier League. Let's hope. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, who is a favorite player? I, I don't have one. Uh, this is really favorite players. Uh -huh. uh, the, the, of course, the players you you like uh, for their playing style. Uh, as a Swede, uh, you mm -hmm. have Ibrahimovic. That uh, is, is kind okay. of a unique player. Uh -huh. uh, now he's getting a bit old. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but but I like players like Kante in in, uh, in yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, I Chelsea. think he has fantastic attitude mm -hmm. uh, he's super loyal with his teammates he's, he covers an entire midfield mm -hmm. in a really good way uh, you, you have this uh, uh, Sergio Ramos is a fantastic mm -hmm. defender uh, Van Dijk uh, mm -hmm. in Liverpool is, is absolutely amazing yeah. uh, and, and these Man City players you can just pick and choose De Bruyne <laughs> and uh, Aguero and uh -huh. it's a lot of good players out there so who would be your favorite coach my favorite coach yeah uh, I, I have some different ones I think uh -huh. Pep Guardiola okay. is uh, absolutely amazing with his uh, new thinking mm -hmm. uh, his uh, tactical uh, uh, strength mm -hmm. uh, the way he plays with his team is fantastic uh, I like Jurgen Klopp 
a mm. lot. Uh, his uh, his charisma is fantastic. Food, yeah. um, so I think if I, I should pick two, two, those two, and otherwise it is uh, uh, Lars Lagerbeck from in Norway, okay. a Swedish coach who's coached Sweden for many years. That uh, uh, what he has done with small nations, first with Sweden, mm. and then he took Iceland uh, mm. to two tournaments in a row, World Cup and and the Euros, and now he's in Norway and with these tiny nations be able to, mm -hmm. to get those kind of results is, is really impressive. Even the Sweden national team is uh, doing pretty much uh, good at international platform, international arena. So yeah, I think we do pretty yeah. well considering the, uh, like they the have very size. Good players in the national team. Yeah, mainly we have we don't have the big star players mm -hmm. now that we had with Ibrahimovic and when we had Freddy Jungberg yeah. or, or Henrik Larsson. And uh, now it's if you look at where the players are playing, it's it's pretty small clubs. Mm -hmm. Some are playing in Sweden, mm -hmm. but it's a really strong group. Uh, they work really hard uh, together, and and the sum of the group gets gets strong. Mm -hmm. So if you have to choose between Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, who would it be? Well, I, <laughs> the I, I said Messi for for all the years, so I think I have to stick to that. But okay. but Ronaldo is absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. But uh, I go with Messi. All right. So Ronaldo, Messi, Ronaldo, Messi. Like you know, there are so many fans and so many like fans fight for uh, both of them. <laughs> you know, so you go for Leo Messi. So what is the best part of Leo Messi? I think he's he's uh, when he, he dribbles the ball, it's it's kind of it doesn't leave his foot, uh, and he's. Uh, uh, he scores the goal, mm -hmm. and I mean, Ronaldo also does yeah. that, but I think that the way Messi is moving with the ball uh, is just amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. So you said Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, so uh, will Manchester City be able to win again this time? Uh, or Liverpool will give them the competition? I think Liverpool can compete. Uh, uh -huh. It's always hard to win again. Uh, that's always really, really hard. Uh, I, I thought Liverpool would, would win before last <laughs> season, uh, but then they start they City got. So unlucky it was, that time. Uh, City was good, and in the end, it, the score is, is is bigger, yeah. and I think that was decisive last season. They, they I mean City has an entire bench; mm -hmm. they can just put on a new player, and it doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, so they're bigger squad than, than Liverpool. But uh, now let, let's see; it's it's going to be really exciting. Yeah. So we have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. It's starting from August. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look forward <laughs> okay. to it. Okay. So apart from football, so what's your other hobbies, other passions? <sighs> now, apart from football, you, you don't have so much more time. But but we we like to being out in the nature, both ah. me and my, my wife, and we, we we like fishing and hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, so we here it it's hard in in, in Nepal, but at home we uh, for her some day over we will go out. Uh, to fish or out okay. to, to hunt, uh, so that that's our therapy uh, mm -hmm. to go out and, and relax and be in the nature. Uh, so, are you enjoying the? You are enjoying time here, definitely. So, are you enjoying Nepali food? <laughs> uh, yeah, so so. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I think Nepali food is. So, which is, is a favorite food if you have to pick from Nepali? Food? I, will, I go for mumus. Okay. Uh, mumus is is, is good. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on the dalbat yet, but okay. uh, it's uh, it's okay, uh, and, and we we eat a lot more vegetarian mm -hmm. now compared to home. So I think it's for us it's good. Uh, so I, I think uh, Nepali food food is it's okay, mm -hmm. absolutely. So did you learn language? Nepali? No, not not. So if you not have to say anything in Nepali, no, what I would I, it I mean? only know this important words for me like pani when I'm thirsty okay. and and, and rum china when I'm not happy. <laughs> uh, so we, we have an ambition uh -huh. to, to learn, but it's been so much work mm -hmm. since we came, so, so we put it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to try, uh, because when you stay here and mm -hmm. stay for a longer time, it, it would be really fun to at least to, to learn decent Nepali. Yeah. But it's a hard language. Yeah, it's a hard It's really language. hard. So you'll learn. No, nevertheless. Yeah, we're going to try. <laughs> so you'll be try. here for a long time, I guess. Yeah, we're going to try. We do our best at least. All right. Uh, so uh, now like you have to play that qualifiers. So what do you have to say to your fans, Nepali fans, Nepali football fans right now? Uh, no, I think uh, the important thing is for the fans to, to, uh, to have patience. And, mm. and, uh, and it's a boring thing to say, but we need to understand where we are right now, that the past five years has been tough mm -hmm. on Nepali football if you compare with with India the progress they have made uh, there's a reason why they're mm -hmm. 
have been so successful and right now we're not there uh, but I can assure everyone that we are working very very hard uh, the players are working very very hard mm -hmm. and and we're going to do our best uh, hopefully uh, yeah. we can do well and uh, but all I can promise is that we're going to do our best so we should think positive and be optimistic I think so. <laughs> so thank you so much, Mr. Colling, for your time. I was waiting for this interview since a long time. <laughs> Finally, you met it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. The name of the game. The name of the game. Brought to you by Mountain Dew. Rick Sutta Nambana.